Welcome to The Herbal Ire, your podcast on all things holistic health, medical astrology, spirituality, herbalism, and so much more. Presented by your host, Ayer Atla, medical astrologist, herbalist, and naturopath. Let's dive right into today's topic, love and light. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Herbal Ire. I'm your host, Ayer Atla. And today I am coming to you with part one of my series that will be coming out. So I know that I mentioned this probably last podcast and maybe a couple before that too, but I just released a book. It's for my currently for my newsletter subscribers only. So if you're not on my newsletter, go to the show notes, click that link, subscribe so you can get that. Newsletters go out on Fridays. So today's Thursday, perfect day to go join. So you get tomorrow's um, newsletter and that will have the link for you to download that book in it. So in just celebration of that, I guess, and also just because I really want to do more in depth due to some questions that I've been getting and receiving from people, I'm going to do a little bit more of an in depth um, look at each one of the signs, right, of the zodiac signs. So uh, I will be going over like their common health concerns, their vitality, their holistic ways to manage like the health of that sign, etc, etc. So um, this is, again, what my book goes over and my book is a very like good guide into like if you're like today we're talking about Aries. So if you're an Aries, like here's potential health problems that can occur and here's ways to help prevent and manage those um, in your life and things to do. And so this will be that plus a little bit more in-depth look at like each sign um, in general, going with the medical astrology and the regular astrology and all that fun stuff. So I'm excited for you all to get this. Um, so let's dive right in. So today we're going to be starting with Aries because Aries is the first sign of the Zodiac and it's uh, a, just a very wonderful, wonderful sign and I'm excited to get into this today. So as far as medical astrology goes, the sun is in your chart is like your vital force your life battery if you will right it's um it governs like your overall health vitality wellness all that stuff and depending on which sign it's located in will really determine your overall health and wellness especially and how well like your immune system works how long your life will be um all that kind of stuff right so if it's in a sign that it likes to be in which in this case aries then it's it's exalted there it likes to be in aries it governs leo so obviously it loves being in leo so in those two signs you'll see that you know there's greater health and vitality and that vital force is just a lot stronger in those two signs than in potentially other signs right so this is a good placement if you have an Aries sun. So when I'm talking about these zodiac signs and the 12 signs of the zodiac for medical astrology, we're going to be mainly looking at them as like you are a native whatever zodiac sign, right? Meaning it's a sun or a moon placement. More likely, I'm leaning more toward the sun placement in this description and this overall understanding of it just as an FYI. So as we go through this series and the 12 signs, listen out for what your sun sign is, and that'll give you an overall idea of like what to expect with your health. So <clears throat> the sun in Aries is, um, yeah, a good placement because it's exalted there. So we're going to talk all about Aries today. This is a cardinal fire sign. It's the first sign of the zodiac. It absolutely shines there. Aries is a strongly masculine or active energy sign, meaning it's very much about going, 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 doing, being active, and how it presents itself to the world. So it's really hard to find a native Aries that just likes to sit down and do nothing. If someone has a strong Aries influence in their chart, they are going to be the person that you notice is always going and doing and all that stuff right they're not they're not sitting a lot you don't find them like resting a lot they don't 
when they get sick, they don't stay sick long. They convalesce quickly. And even when they're sick, it's hard to get them to like stay in bed to rest and get better, right? So it's that cardinal energy that we're really seeing there, a dynamic, you know, energy that wants to start things and get things moving and, you know, keep going. It doesn't like to stop and get stalled. Um, so in looking at like the glyphs, the what the, uh, the, the glyphs look like for each sign, Aries is the sign of the ram. So it's represented by a glyph that looks like a V that curves out at the tips, making, in essence, the rams of the horn. Uh, the horn of the ram. There we go. <laughs> making the horns of the ram. So uh, that is what Aries looks like in your chart. So if you go and you run your natal chart and you see what looks like a V with little curled ends going curling outwards into what looks like horns, that is Aries in your chart. Everybody has every sign in their chart but you don't have planets in every sign. So the influence of the planets on the signs is what you feel the most in like the medical astrology side, the psychological side, the influence of the planets. So you will may have Aries in your chart, but not in a planet and a planet's not there. And so because of that, you may not notice as much of an influence um, from Aries in your chart. So if someone has a strong Aries influence, they have a sun or moon in Aries, they have a rising sign in Aries, they have Aries in the first or the sixth house. So lots of placements that you can have a, a stronger Aries influence over others. In astrology, then we have the three different modes. These represent what part of the seasons each sign is positioned in. So we have the cardinal, the mutable, fixed the cardinal the fixed and the mutable right so cardinal are all signs that are at the beginning of each season so the zodiac signs actually are like season placeholders they don't have anything to do with the actual actual constellations in the sky they're just named after them they actually follow the season so like aries is that cardinal fire sign that is the first sign in the zodiac it starts in the spring when everything is like that dynamic nature right of change coming and uh, plants popping back up and things growing that have been dormant all year, like life returning, right? So that's a lot of dynamic energy there to get things moving. There's a lot of active energy that you see at the beginning of spring. You see animals stirring and running around, babies being born, new plant growth, like life is returning after all being dormant for the winter. And so that um, tends to be the beginning of each season, tends to be that cardinal type element, right? Where things are kind of changing and they're uh, becoming like new again for that season. So that's what the cardinal is. The fixed signs are in the middle of each season. That's because they're just that, they're fixed in place, right? By the middle of the season, things have kind of calmed down some, the weather tends to be more stable, all the flowers and fauna are at their peak. Things are usually more calm, typically, right? Like, think of like the height of summer. It's hot, beautiful days, most of the time sunny. You don't have a lot of rain and storms often, uh, but the beginning of the season, right, as it's changing from spring to summer, you'll notice there's a lot of, like, storming potentially and a lot of crazy weather where you're like, one day is like a spring day, the next day is like a midsummer day, the day after that is like winter. Like, there's a lot of that changeable energy as it changes into a new season. Then you get to the middle of the season and things have kind of calmed down. Then you get to the end of the season where then things are like changing again. Um, so that's the mutable signs, right? The mutable is the end of a season when it's changing into another season. So mutable signs and mutable energy is very changeable, right? Think about like the spring moving into the summer, the summer moving into the fall. That's when we get all those crazy days I was talking about, right? Where like one minute it's winter, the next minute it's fall, the next day it's rainy, then it's like hailing and then we have snow. And, like there's all kinds of crazy weather. It's very changeable. It can be super windy one day and like super still the next, you know, all that. And that's what that mutable energy is about right it's very changeable so think of like the mutable energy signs which are gemini um um sagittarius you know very changeable signs if you know anybody who's a native 
um, Gemini, a native Sagittarius, you will see that they like they change their minds a lot, right? And uh, they they're back and forth on a lot of things. They're one minute they're like, yes, let's go do this, and the next is like, oh, never mind, I'm too tired, and they want to sleep, and then they they don't sleep for days, and they're just they have a lot of that mutable, changeable energy, and have a hard time being in one thing or one spot or one energy flow for too long. So that's the that's the modes and uh, in a very, very brief manner for you. <laughs> but so Aries is a cardinal sign. It's the sign that's the beginning of the spring, the first sign of zodiac. And uh, this is apropos because Aries tends to be a leader, right? And they will most likely be the ones to charge headfirst into a situation and take control of it quickly. Many people ask why we start the Zodiac in March and not January. And for the majority of the times that humans have been keeping track of the years, the years actually started in March. We didn't start our years in the dead of winter. We started them in March when spring began. Nature started awakening again. That marked the beginning of the new year. And with all the new life and the new growth, the uptake of energy that humans were getting, things coming anew again. And so starting the year in the middle of winter just didn't make sense to anybody. And to be honest, it still doesn't to me. So... And our house, we celebrate the new year in March with the holiday Ostera. But <laughs> y'all do you. That's, you know, that's just how it's been. And celebrating a change of year in the middle of the winter. I don't know about you, but I don't have any motivation to do anything. I was like, oh, let's make New Year's resolutions. No, it's the middle of winter. I want to rest. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to make a resolution to, you know, suddenly go start doing new things. But when the spring comes, right, when the spring comes, that's when you start feeling that energy and that motivation to do things. And that's when it's easier to set those you know so uh, so-called new year's resolutions so if you find yourself struggling with the year changing and you know into december beginning of january and starting new things then give yourself some grace and a break and start all of those things in march when you might feel that energy hitting you more so then the next thing we look at for each sign is the element that is associated with it as i mentioned aries is element of fire so anyone listening who isn't aries native aries or who knows one um knows how fiery that aries natives can be in their personalities sometimes they can be quick to a temper many times but just as quickly burn out and immediately turn back to a better mood right they uh, fire signs are considered a more masculine or active type energy, and if dividing the energies into male and female is something that just doesn't resonate with you, then um, masculine energy is the more active, like, doing energy, and the feminine energy is more like the passive, receptive, just being energy, right, where we're not forcing ourselves to just go, go, go all the time. Um, it allows the... Active energy is like is the energy that gives you the energy to like get shit done, whereas the passive receptive energy is really allows like other energies in, others energies in, allows you to discern how to respond to that energy and rest when you need it, like teach yourself to rest. And so it's having a good balance of these energies in your life is important to leading a well-balanced, happy life. Too much going, doing, everything like that, right? It can lead to burnout, but too much resting <laughs> and receiving others' energies and being, you know, too passive can lead to feeling overwhelmed and like you've lost yourself. So you need to have a good balance of that. Aries is a fire sign, which if anybody knows anything about fire, it's very, you know, indecisive sometimes, but also just very like, oh, what am I looking for? It's just very, again, dynamic, right? It's burning hot one minute, it can die down some. If you fan it just right, it'll it'll flare back up. So it can burn things up or it can stay in one area, it can spread or it can, you know, change direction. So it's very, very changeable in some ways and creates change as well, right? When a fire burns through somewhere that, you know, changes the landscape of what it burned through changes nature it changes people's houses unfortunately like it, it just changes what it touches and that could be for the better in the case of like forests sometimes 
too much dead grow, you know, too many dead trees and dead things are not good. So a fire can be cleansing of the fact that he gets rid of the dead to make way for the new life and the new plants and the new trees. And other times it can be bad because it does also at the same time as it gets rid of the stuff that the forest needs to get rid of, it also unfortunately gets rid of some of the good stuff that it needs to. So there's a balance in that fiery um, type nature. So Aries definitely exhibits a lot of that. Because they're a fire sign and they're a cardinal fire sign, that resting and just not doing too many things can be very difficult for natives of this sign. So one of the things Aries really needs to learn is to take time to rest, receive, just be, relax. <laughs> you don't always need to be going, going, going. Things will still be there if you take some time off for yourself, I promise. Life will not leave you behind if you take a break. For real, nobody will be as mad as you think they will be. Aries tend to be really hard on themselves for wanting to take a break and needing some time off. So if you are a native Aries, just remember to remind yourself that it's okay to take a break. And it's necessary to take a break, right? So the ruler of Aries is Mars. Mars is considered the warrior planet and is named after the god of war in the Roman pantheon. And Aries was the Greek god of war and such is the warrior of the planet Mars. So this is why they go together. These two do make a good, albeit very hot and fiery pair. <laughs> so in medical astrology, Mars is actually considered to be a hotter planet than the sun. And so this planet is therefore known for causing inflammation caused by that heat that gets trapped in the body. Aries, therefore, does this as well, albeit to a lesser degree, especially depending on its placement in your chart. So if it's in the bottom half of your chart, it'll be um, cooler than if it's in the upper half of your chart, right? Because if you're looking at your natal chart, it's divided in half by a line. The bottom half shows like what was below the horizon when you were born, planets and signs below the horizon. And anything above that line shows it was above the horizon. So if it's above the horizon, it was in the sun's path, right? And if it was below, then it was hidden um, from the direct uh, nature of the sun. So that cools them down a little bit. So if you have an upper placement, then you might find some of these things are more likely for you or more common. These might be things you struggle with more when we get to the um, potential health problems. Or if you're below, you might notice that you get these every once in a while, but they're not such a big deal for you. So Aries rules the head, the adrenal glands, the upper jaw and the teeth, the febrile mechanism, and it co-rules the iron in the blood with Mars. So um, Aries it rules the first house on the wheel of the zodiac. So in astrology, there are 12 houses on the natal chart, and each house is governed by a sign in the zodiac, starting at house one with Aries and going counterclockwise in order to house 12. So it starts with Aries, goes all the way around counterclockwise, and ends with Pisces in house 12. Um, the first six houses are below the horizon on the chart. These are considered like the more personal houses. They govern like the themes of daily life, community, family, etc. They are more like the internal or subconscious side of yourself. The last six are above the horizon. These are more of like the interpersonal houses. These rules, these rule like relationships, travel, friendships, jobs, business, things like that. These are the like conscious houses of the self. So these are the ones that are how you interact with each other, like on it, you know, outside of like who you really are. Sometimes um, you'll show up in a way that's maybe not congruent with who you are on the inside because you don't want people to not like you and you don't want to not be accepted. And that's your ego coming out to protect you, right? So um, that's what I mean when I say more like conscious side is the side that people see of you, whereas the first six houses are more of like what's going on inside of you that maybe people aren't privy to, right? So the first house of the wheel is all about the self, your personality, your appearance, who you are on the inside. Its general theme is like I am. In medical astrology, the first house also is responsible for your overall health and vitality. So depending on which sign is in your first house on your natal chart, you may be more prone to illness or you might be someone who doesn't get sick as often. You could be somewhere in between. It's kind of the general ruler of your life battery. So your rising sign is what governs the first house of your chart. So like mine's a Leo. Mine's in the first house there. So it's really 
you know, like for me being a rising Leo, my personality can come across very outgoing, but with all the Scorpio as my sun and my moon, and I'm also like, a, I'm an introvert, right? So I'm like an extroverted introvert. I can be on when I need to be, but my battery drains quickly and I need to get away from people and go recharge. Um, but also as far as like my appearance, um, I am very like picky about my hair <laughs> and how it looks and um it's kind of like my thing right it's always like it's a different color or a different style or there's something with my hair my that part of my appearance is very important to me I'm not into makeup or anything like that so that's not my thing and my clothes are kind of like very original they're not they're not something that you know like everybody else is wearing right so that's what I mean when it says it governs like your appearance and your personality and things like that. It's like who you are on the inside and how you express that on the outside in some ways. So, and overall health. So with Aries, your overall health is going to be pretty good because it likes being in the first house. If this is where your first house, if your first house happens to be in Aries and it's going to be a very hot, fiery vitality, right? So that's um, the best thing that uh, best placement for it obviously all the how all the signs do better when they're in their specific house that they govern um so natives of any of the zodiac signs can exhibit traits and behaviors that are obviously you know more desirable or less desirable based on um, how well they have them integrated into their charts and how much they are doing the inner work necessary in their lives to you know evolve and grow as a person right so there's gonna always be like the low it lower unevolved expressions as we call it or the high or evolved expressions of each sign and so knowing these i feel is important so you can get to know yourself better and understand when you're living maybe in that low expression and and that unevolved side you need to you know start working on some inner growth to move yourself into a different place in your life your mental health physical health etc and just in how you interact with people right it's hard to have friends if you're always in the low expression it's hard to maintain relationships if you're always in that low expression it's hard to live the life you want when you're living in that unevolved expression of your sign so natives of any sign can so aries and its high evolved expression is they're very willful, they're direct, they're energetic, they're strong, they're pioneering, right? They're leading the way into something new. They're adventurous, courageous, they're enthusiastic, ambitious. Aries is just very uniquely designed to lead the way, chart new pathways in life. Aries is always seeking something new to explore, right? In its high expression, it wants to go do new things. So these are the visionaries of the Zodiac. They're always expanding, seeking new experiences and opportunities. They're very very good at charting new territory and you'll see a lot of areas that are innovating new tech products systems etc in their life Aries in its low or unevolved expression can present as someone who's angry frustrated competitive they're insensitive impatient cruel arrogant they tend to be dominating and they are stressed out all the time. They're full of tension and selfishness. They have a difficult time starting or finishing projects or tasks that are on their to-do list. And if an Aries does not consciously choose their challenges in life, they will lean toward conflict in their life instead, right? Like they will go seek out something to give them like that reason <laughs> to like go do something, get that challenge, right? So you'll see a lot of native Aries in their unevolved expression being the ones whose lives are always filled with drama, right? Like the people who doesn't seem like no matter what's going on in their life, it's full of drama of some sort. Like they go looking for it, it's how it feels. And honestly, a lot of them do because they if they aren't putting that need for a challenge into something constructive or into their growth, then it unfortunately finds its way into their interpersonal relationships and their jobs and just how they interact with the world in general, right? Always looking for some kind of a challenge. And unfortunately, that leans into conflict and drama. 
Um, Ares has a high amount of vital force, and as such, they really need to push that into evolutionary change and growth as a person, instead of into these unnecessary confrontations and drama. So in this low or unevolved expression, these are the people you find like in online spaces that like literally go looking for fights and comment things that people would just like normally not say to people in real life, like right? Like there's things you wouldn't say to people like to their face. And that's very much what it is, at least as someone who constantly picks fight with fights with their loved ones, attempts to hold others to like nearly impossible standards that they actually are holding for themselves, but now think everybody else needs to do as well, right? Aries needs a channel and a resource for channeling that amazing amount of fire energy that they do contain. So an Aries in their evolved high expression has found a way to channel that energy into something constructive and good and growing them as a human being, helping others, doing something for like the collective good is also very good for Aries as well. Um, common health concerns for Aries. So um, you can see Aries warrior nature when it's in the sun placement, especially um, in the fact that most Aries individuals have a very strong immune system response in the event of any invader coming into the body. Aries usually presents with a quick onset high fever that burns bright and like hot, hot, hot for several hours. And then it just like disappears almost as soon as it appears. Um, and so if you let Aries natives just, their immune system just do its thing, they will con they will get over, like, illness very quickly. They do not tend to hold on to sickness for very long at all, which is a good thing because they have a hard time convalescing, which is the part of being sick where you lay in bed or on the couch and you nourish yourself with, like, soups and you know whatever else sounds good and you don't do anything <laughs> but rest and Aries has a hard time with that so it's very good that they're they have a good immune system that tends to get them through things quickly because um, they don't like lay laying around and uh, you will find these are the ones that will be like sick as a dog and still at work right um, and going and doing and you find out later that they have like 104 degree fever all day that's Fahrenheit it would be like what is that, like 39, 40 degrees uh, Celsius, somewhere in there. Either way, way too high. <laughs> but they were still working and, and like doing their thing, right? So this can in turn extend that illness for some of them, right? Because if we're not resting when we're sick, then our body's going to take longer to fight things off. That's just the way it works. It needs time and rest to get over things sometimes. So one of the things that Aries really needs to learn to do is to lean into that like feminine receptive energy and just be be still just sit <laughs> learn to receive instead of always pushing and going right um, instead of always having to lead the way learn to kind of sit back some and let someone else lead the way for a little bit and just you know be receptive and open to what they're saying and what's going on in the room and not always having to be the one who's charging in head first the silver lining to this tendency of a quick, swift immune system is the fact that Aries is one of the most, um, one of the highest long-lived signs, right? Um, and if an accident of stupidity doesn't end their lives first, <laughs> Aries is the adrenaline junkie of the Zodiac. So these are the people that you will see like skydiving, bungee jumping, riding motorcycles at high speeds, base jumping, etc. They're always doing something that seems a bit like reckless and kind of crazy to a lot of other people so due to this they many of them have the possibility of suffering many injuries and can um in some instances in their life early by you know an accident during one of these adventurous adrenaline seeking activities that they like to do so they need to learn to balance their need for adrenaline rushes with caution, proper planning, instead of rushing right into things without thinking, as many of them are prone to do, especially if they're in their low, unevolved ex expression, right? You're going to see the really hot-headed, quick to temper, you know, beat the crap out of somebody, making rash decisions, Aries in that low, unevolved expression. Whereas if they're in their evolved expression, you're going to see them stopping first and thinking about things making a plan before rushing headlong so um, that is you know a possibility with 
an unevolved Aries that they get in more accidents like that because they tend to rush into things without thinking. So other common health issues, the sign is really prone to headaches and migraines. Um, they're usually quick to appear. They come on hot and heavy. Um, they can be pretty intensely painful for many um, native Aries. They also, because of that, tend toward adrenal fatigue because of their um, desire to always go, 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 right? And always seek that adrenaline type, you know, activities and that life drama and things that keep their stress levels up high they tend toward like actual adrenal fatigue and eventually like burnout which in the medical you know arena is hpa axis dysfunction right where that mechanism of releasing adrenaline and getting the results that you want right is now dysfunctional because they've released so much adrenaline so often that their body isn't really even recognizing it until the levels get super high and eventually your adrenals can only keep producing so much stuff so often before they just get tired <laughs> of doing that and it leads to a you know a dysfunction and a dysregulation in that system which in turn then leads to a bunch of other health problems so this is just something to, you know, be aware of. If you're a native Aries, these are things to be aware of and notice if you're doing them so that you can change directions and pay attention and learn to really listen to your body so that this doesn't happen to you. Um, and actually, Aries tend toward burnout in a lot of areas of their life. Burnout from work, so like physical burnout, mental burnout, emotional burnout, spiritual burnout, because when they jump into something, it's very much all or nothing with an Aries, right? They are all in or they're not in at all. There's no in between. So learning that balance of being like into something, but not so in that you can't do anything else and you're burning yourself out from doing it. So balance is really key here. And Aries opposite sign uh, really helps with that tendency because Aries opposite sign um, is all about balance, right? So Aries opposite sign is Libra, right? So it's the balance scene sign, right? The Libra is the scales, the balances, and it's all about the balances of the body and the like mental balances and physical balances and spiritual balances and emotional balances. So it's all about the balances in your life. So really leaning into that polarity, that opposite sign of Aries and really learning to bring balance to your life in all things, in your diet, in your, you know, daily movements and your work and your relationships will really bring a lot of health and wellness and just peace to your life, right? If you're a native Aries and you find that there always seems to be some kind of conflict or drama going on in your life, take a, you need to take a good hard look at like how much of that is because of you causing it, right? Maybe even unintentionally, but how much of that is you showing up and looking for conflict or looking for drama and as such like attracting that to yourself what we put out is what we get back so the more energy you put out of conflict the more conflict you're going to get back so just really learning to look inside of yourself and see if maybe just maybe you might be the one who's bringing all of that drama to your own life right um other things that can happen is a tendency towards sleep disturbances is common because again, they don't like to rest, you like to keep going. They can lean toward like a hot digestion as well, which means that there's like poor absorption and a really fast transit time, hence the poor absorption because things are moving too fast from the beginning of digestion to the end and so your body's unable to absorb things well. And a lot of that can be because <laughs> Like everything else, their digestive system wants to keep moving and not taking its time to slow down and properly do its job. The other part is that they're not taking time to, like, you know, eat slowly and consciously and to stop and just be <laughs> in their life. So everything in their body is just constantly going, 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 going. Um, so things to look out for, for sure. Um, herbs then that we want to look at, right? Herbs that are under Aries governance that can help with many of these health issues that we just talked about, right? So the herbal actions, these are things that we want to look that the actions of the herbs that we want to try have or not. So we want to um, 
see herbs that are stimulants. Um, herbs governed by Aries tend to be stimulants, diffusives, adaptogenic, infl inflammation modulating, diaphoretics. Um, that means they make you sweat, right? Um, the nervine action is actually like an opposing quality and is often indicated for Aries, especially if they're in their low expression. Nervines work on the nervous system and on like all the nervous systems, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic and the central nervous system. Like it works on all of those and really helps to like calm those down because they tend to be very stressed out in native Aries. Um, some of these herbs include nettles, Stingy nettles, ashwagandha, um, cayenne pepper, which, yes, is a herb because um, it does have medicinal properties. <laughs> um, elder, which you can use the elder flowers or the elder berries, um, either one. Um, the elder flowers tend to be more of an Aries governance than the berries. Um, for um, antipathetic reactions, meaning... So those first ones I mentioned are all sympathetic actors, which mean they all are like hot, drying herbs, which is what Aries is, right? A very hot, drying sign. So then antipathetic would be ones that are cooling and moisturizing and calming, um, the opposite of Aries. So they would help if you're feeling more in your low expression or you're having a lot of um, health issues that we mentioned and talked about, then you want to try some of these antipathetic um, herbs instead. So that would be skullcap, um, milky oats, passion flower, licorice, Oregon grape root, lavender. Um, many of these that have that antipathetic quality are actually ruled by the moon, which makes sense <laughs> because the moon is a very cooling, relaxing planet, right? And all the herbs under the moon are moisturizing and cooling and demulcent. And, you know, they bring a lot of that, like, moon-esque quality to it which Aries could definitely use some more of so holistic ways to prevent health issues so if you're an Aries native sun or moon um, in this case we're leaning more towards sun because that's a hotter placement which can lend to more of these issues over a moon placement um, or also a rising placement this can also be true for you as well so some things to incorporate. Make sure you are getting some sort of daily movement. And I mean daily movement that tires you out. So Aries love sports that are really physical in nature. Aries love lots of types of, you know, physical movement. So some kind of daily physical movement in your life that tires you out. Whatever that is that you like. Doesn't matter. Um. It just needs plenty of it. Without it, dis-ease, disharmony sets in quickly in the body, and that's when you'll start noticing health issues cropping up. So daily movement is imperative if you are in native Aries. There is a strong, strong, strong tendency toward dehydration with this sign. So if you start noticing that your skin feels drier, your eyes feel drier, you're getting some acid reflux, this is all signs that you're not getting enough water as an Aries and you need some more. And also that you're probably not getting enough fats in your diet too, right? So there's two types of hydration. There's water hydration, which everybody knows about. And then there's oil hydration, which is getting plenty of fats in your diet so that the myelin sheaths on your nervous system are able to, you know, uh, function properly. They need, they're made from basically fats. They need lots of fats in your diet to be able to rebuild themselves if they start having issues. Your brain needs a ton of fat because it's basically a big ball of fat floating in water. So it also needs a lot of water. Um, so your nervous system and your brain and your spinal cord all require lots of fats. And without that, issues start happening so you need to be hydrated with oils plenty of oils in your diet and these are like cold pressed organic oils so avocado coconut olive um, all of that kind and then good healthy fats that you're ingesting in your diet as well avocados nuts and seeds nut butters things like that um 
as well as making sure that you're getting plenty of electrolytes as well, because Aries do tend to burn through everything quickly. All of the vitamins and minerals, they, they burn through everything quickly. And so because of that, you need to make sure you're getting plenty of fat soluble vitamins, especially A, D, E, and K. And also that you're getting plenty of minerals in your diet. So sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, all of those. Okay. Brain health is a huge thing here for Aries. So again, plenty of healthy fats in your diet uh, will ensure you have a he happy, healthy brain. As we mentioned, cold-pressed organic oils are best, as well as the other things that I mentioned. Headaches and migraines, very common with this sign. Um, most are usually caused by an imbalance somewhere in the body. Either there's too little vitamin A, D, and E, there's not enough hydration, which then can lead to kidney issues because... Dehydration really affects your kidneys, which then in turn can lead to headaches because you have a buildup of toxins in your system that usually are filtered out by your kidneys. But since your kidneys aren't functioning at their best because they're dehydrated, then things build up. So um, again, this is when you want to like lean into Libra, right? The Libra is your balancing sign and Libra rules the kidneys. So if you're not taking care of the balances in your body is going to affect your kidneys. It's going to affect your hormones. It's going to affect your acid alkaline balances. And it's going to affect your mineral and vitamin balances, which is going to lead to some kind of dysfunction somewhere. And a lot of headaches I've seen in Aries, natives that I have worked with in my practice are usually caused by some sort of other imbalance going on in their body. Um, so always tend to proper diet and kidney health. And nettles are great for your kidneys. So is uva ursi. These are two herbs that are fabulous to put into like a daily drink or tea and do that. Sleeping issues are definitely a thing that can occur here as well. So ensuring you have a good sleep routine in place will help. Make sure you're getting plenty of morning sunlight between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. And plenty of evening sunlight between 6 p.m. and sunset. Um every day as that helps regulate your melatonin levels and your dopamine levels and your cortisol levels. Um, make sure you're getting that sun time without sunglasses, without a hat, without anything blocking the light receptors in your eyes that need that. If you're having hormonal imbalances, which is very common in Aries due to, you know, Libra being their polar opposite sign, then you need that sunlight in the morning, especially that without sunglasses, without anything blocking the light from getting into your eyes, because the sun governs your hormone levels and you need plenty of sun for your hormones to be regulated in your body. We are a microcosm of nature and we need nature for our bodies to work well, especially Aries. Aries need plenty of time outside in the sun to help them. So, I think that's everything. This was just a very quick, semi-in-depth um, look at Aries from a medical astrology standpoint. Aries sun placements are just very dynamic, amazing people. And when tending to their health in a way that is best for them are one of the longest living signs of the Zodiac. So I hope that that helped you. If you're a native Aries listening to this, I hope that gave you some insight as to things that could potentially crop up and then how to manage them as well in the future if they do and how to keep them from happening hopefully all together for you if you have any questions you just want to know more you want a whole reading because you're like hey this was super fascinating i want to see what else is going on in my chart and i want to see what else i can do to keep myself happy and healthy or if you're not happy and healthy currently to become happy and healthy then please reach out let's get you a reading and get you going down that path today right so in the show notes there will be a link go schedule your medical astrology reading if you have anything you want to say or any questions about this episode email me at info at twin that's also in the show notes so you can find that but yes let reach out if you have questions about this episode i would love to hear them and help you more follow me on instagram at twin raven naturals and come join my Discord group where I talk more about this, answer your questions. We have a great community, absolutely great place to be. Um, so come join me there. That will also be in the show notes as well. I 
think that's everything then. So I will let you all go. Thank you for tuning in. I will chat with you next time. Love and light. That's it for another great episode of The Herbal Iyer. Tune in next week for more valuable content with your host, Iyer Atla.